Hi, I'm going to be doing an image uh, stabilization test on the, uh, well, with Sony's new uh, Catalyst Browse software which supports certain Sony cameras and one of them happens to be the RX0 Mark II which I'm using right now. So I'm shooting this with no internal image stabilization. This camera doesn't have optical uh, stabilization. So I'm trying uh, with no stabilization to get a uh, just a software image uh, stabilization that is supposedly as good as a gimbal. But um, I don't have an electronic gimbal to compare with, but I thought we'd give it a try. So the footage you're watching now is coming out of the uh, Sony Catalyst software and hopefully it's really stabilized. So I'm just hand holding uh, this camera and hopefully it works too well. Sorry if the audio is crap, but just using the internal mic. So anyway, we'll see how this goes. Um, and I'll show you at the end how simple uh, this is in software because what it does is that uh, there's an internal um, accelerometer in the camera and it actually records the raw accelerometer data encodes it in the mp4 file on certain cameras the rx0 mark ii the zv1 and one of their alpha cameras i've tried my other cameras it doesn't really work so um it's only the rx0 mark ii that i have at the moment i am getting a zv1 it's actually on the way but yeah it records the accelerometer information in there and that can be used to do um, pretty spectacular software uh, stabilization because it knows, if I tilt the camera like this, it knows where the camera is pointed at all times. And hopefully, um, using some crop, of course, you're not gonna get the uh, full uh, size image. It is gonna crop it. So uh, we'll try different uh, crop settings of this and see how it goes. But anyway, I'll just uh, hold it out in front like this i'm just like i'm <laughs> just hand holding this camera right in front now so anyway you need lots of light you need a very sharp fast uh, shutter speed to do this you can't do it with a low shutter speed apparently but uh anyway hopefully the results will be really spectacular but it doesn't work if you turn the internal stabilization on it just comes a gutter Hi, so let's check out the Sony Catalyst Browse software. It's called this Catalyst Browse, and there's another one which allows you to do some other stuff. But the Browse software just allows you to uh, just watch your browse your video files, do a little bit of like touch up, or in this case, stabilization, and then uh, render and export them. So it's like a, a pre process uh, kind of thing before you go into your video editing software. So it, um, it, you don't have to use it with uh, Sony cameras at all. You can just drag and drop MP4 files in here, but there's no point. It, the stabilization feature, which we're going to look at, is specific to Sony cameras and specific, as I said, to only certain models like the RX0 Mark II here, which um, has an internal uh, accelerometer, which uh, of course is uh, used for the internal uh, digital stabilization in the camera. But if you turn off the di internal digital uh, stabilization, this one does not have optical steady shot in the lens because it's so uh, compact. Then if you turn that off, then what it does is it takes, rather than waste that accelerometer data, it actually embeds it into the MP4 file, which is brilliant. And there's no software you have to set there's no like menu option or anything you have to do with this um and by the way if you're wondering about the rx0 mark ii camera it's not the best solution out there the number one gripe i have with this camera um is that it uh, does not do continuous autofocus. So if you focus at the wrong distance, so if you press record right now and then go out like that further, then uh, your focus is screwed. It doesn't have continuous autofocus. So yeah, it's the only annoying thing about this. Apart from this, I use it as it's a waterproof action cam with a flippy camera. Apart from that, I love it. But anyway, um, this has built in and a couple of other uh, Sony cameras embed that information in the MP4 file. So what you do is um, this software, easy to install, just and then you just drag your files in here. I've dragged in a couple of uh, test files, including that walking footage you just uh, saw. And you'll notice that uh, some of these files, two of them don't have this little icon next to it, this little camera image stabilization icon. What that is, is it says contains stabilization metadata. It's embedded in 
into the MP4 file. Yeah, uh, you don't have to like uh, hook your camera up and like load it into this software. It's just it's in the MP4 file. Um, it's just you know, dragged in and you just drag them in and Bob's your uncle. Really easy. And there's just simply a stabilize button down in the corner here. And I'm not kidding. That's it. Um, <laughs> so let's take this footage that we'll just watch in, right? Really jerky. Hi, blah, blah, blah. Shut up. Okay. And we'll just go stabilize. And it, you know, takes uh, like five seconds or something. It analyzes that. And bingo. Um, it <laughs> fail here. It's automatically detected the crop size, but we can actually go up here to manual like this and it's set to third minimum crop. It just didn't know what to do. It didn't detect that one properly. But anyway, so if you go to 100%, so there's no cropping whatsoever, so it's doing no stabilization. The one on the right here is the stabilized footage. You can see there's no difference. But if we Actually, uh, let me turn the speaker down. If we go to say 95% cropping ratio, so it's uh, so you lose 5% of your image, but not you know that's not much. Watch this. See, 5% is pretty decent. Look at that. Wow. And it does this in real time. So if we go 90%, right, right, which is you know you're still not losing a huge amount of your image there. Then that's the one that you're seeing before. Look at the, look at the stabilization. That is amazing. That is absolutely amazing. Ed, that is gimbal-like uh, stabilization. But I've seen some other videos on this, and they go into the more pros and cons, and actually compare it with gim gimbals and do more control tests to what I'm doing here. But this is really remarkable. So I'm very impressed by that. And uh, so you know, you don't actually gain. Like we can go down to 85. And we won't actually gain much by doing that. There you go. Uh, it, maybe it's a little bit, you could argue, it's a little bit better. Can we just keep it going? 90, like that. Oh, yeah, okay. But anyway, you shouldn't have to go, like, below 90% crop for that. That's Now it's 80%. There you go. Wow. That is remarkable. That is really fantastic stuff. So it turns this otherwise non-optically stabilized camera into something absolutely fantastic with minimum effort. And then once you're happy with that, with the preview, looks absolutely fantastic, um, then you can just go up here and render and uh, you can uh, rename it and then it gives you all the information and you can go uh, same as source. I wouldn't change any of this stuff. You can like change the output format and stuff like that. I, you know, unless you really want to for some specific reason. Now, of course, because it's cropped the image, it will actually re resize that somehow back to full HD. So, you, you know, it was like 1536 by 864 up here. Okay, so that resolution, but it will render that back to 1920 by 1080. So how it actually does that, I'm not sure, but anyway, the image quality seems fantastic, even using like a complex background, like all these trees and everything. And I was like hand holding the camera, like out here, like this. I was hand, like holding it at arm length, and when I was swapped it around to walk in front, I was holding it out like that. And it's, you know, with a long lever like that, it's really hard to keep the thing stable. I'm like, like if you hold it like this or something, you can, you know, keep it relatively stable, but holding it out like that, doesn't matter what you do, you're going to come a gutter. Um, and the image is going to be terrible, and it handles that no problem whatsoever. So you can just render this out with all the default options. I found this 4 minute 30 took about uh, 8, 9 minutes, something like that on my, uh, what is it, 8790 machine or something. Anyway, um, it, it's not particular. It does seem to support the NVIDIA GeForce, there it is, video processing device. I'm not sure whether it uses that for rendering, but anyway, um, yeah, it's <laughs> it's just great. I'm so impressed by this. Let me show you another clip. The software does actually leave a bit to be desired in terms of, uh, you know, GUI usability and stuff like that. I've found a few little quirks with it, but anyway, um, this one inside the lab here, uh, let me show you this one. So we'll just Click on that, stabilize. This is just a walk through my lab here. So here it is. Well, I can show you. Let's just go straight in, stabilization. Boom, it's it's done. It's done all the processing. So let's go to 95%. Let's start that again. Here we go. This is 95%. Look at that. Even on 90, losing only 5% crop. That is, see how shaky that is? Because I was really holding it out at arm's length. Wow, look at that. Look at that pan. That's beautiful. 
and that's only losing 5% crop. That's absolutely remarkable. Let's take that down to 90% and let's give that a burl again. Wow, look at that. Is that as good as a gimbal? Let me know. Leave it down in the comments if you're, you know, you're a camera aficionado and you love your gimbals. Um, and that's not losing a lot of field of view either. That's, that's pretty impressive. Now what I've done with this clip here is this one is uh, shot in the same location as before, but I turned the digital image stabilization on inside here, which I found is not that terrific. And when you try to add image stabilization on top of already stabilized footage, it like, bleh, you get all sorts of jello effects and all sorts of things. I don't know the correct term for it. Let us know in the comments down below. But I haven't tried this yet. So here's, here's the footage. Here it is. So this is digital stabilized in the camera. And as you can see, it's not too bad. But you can see it sort of shake a bit. It's got the heebie-jeebies, right? There it is. There's tilt test and stuff like that. And there's the in-front test. You can see it. You know, it's bob around, it's sort of, yeah, it's, you know, it's okay. It's better than the, uh, than the, just having no stabilization, of course. Absolutely no doubt about that. But let's stabilize this puppy and see, let's do our 90 again. Let's try our 90% and see what it's like. Nah, here you go. You see, it's trying to stabilize. It's worse. It's trying to stabilize the already stabilized footage and it just no the two competing algorithms are just going, and it's just no nah, it's just shaking to buggery look at that no it's absolutely terrible so yeah uh, the best thing to do with your camera with your sony camera that supports this is to not have any internal stabilization and uh yeah anyway i think that footage is better but i'll try and do a side by side here of the digital catalyst uh, stabilization won't be exactly the same shot but it'll be close enough uh to 90 percent uh, catalyst stabilization to the in-body uh digital stabilization that uh information in the file um that accelerometer information in there but because it's already doing it digitally it's going to no it's going to come a gutter pretty quick so this is with steady shot on I was so impressed with this, I bought the company. Um, <laughs> the RX0 now, I'm and I'm never going to turn this digital stabilization on again. Um, it's just it's just useless compared to uh, this absolutely fantastic free piece of software. Yeah, the render takes a little bit, but if you really want to stabilize your footage, this is absolutely fantastic results. I'm sure there's results, as I said, like with low shutter speeds and stuff like that. I think you're probably I've heard you're going to come a gutter on that. Um, but if you, you you know, got lots of light, fast shutter speed, everything like I was outdoors. So bright out there today. But even in my lab here, you saw it. I did have my studio overhead lights on. You can see that there. But uh, but but even that, you know, it's it's nothing like outdoors. And that's just that's fantastic for not much sacrificing crop. Wow. So anyway, if you liked that video, please give it a big thumbs up and let me know in the comments down below what you think of this stabilization because I think it's the duck's guts. Catch you next time.